Hi there guys, it's Omega, and I had mentioned doing a tour of my sewing room, and so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm um, not currently working on a project, I actually just finished this project. If you remember in my last video, I think I talked about making this. This fabric was made into a top that I will um, show you guys in another video. So I just had the scraps there, I wanted to show you. I did cut it out and finish it. Um, and I'll show you that in another video. Um, and as far as modeling anything, I'm no model in any way, shape or form. But um, what I will do is after I have maybe completed a few projects, I'll do all of them on one video. And then I'll maybe start doing, you know, one at a time. But I did want to show you guys what I have completed so far. But what I'm doing today is the sewing room tour. So I'm standing at the door where I come into my sewing room. And uh, this is, so this is my cutting table here that I use. And of course, this is the scraps from the project I just finished, which is a top. Um... On my table, I also have some Berta patterns here, uh, several magazines. They're old, old magazines, but you know, one thing I like about Berta patterns is they span time very well, but at least most of them, most styles do. So when I do plan on making a Berta um, project, I'll take y'all along for the ride and be able to show you how I trace out the pattern and all of that. But on my table also is all my cutting instruments, my scissors, I mean multiple scissors, but of course my gingers are my favorite scissors. Then I have my rotary cutters, I have several sizes, and uh, one ruler. Then I have my tracing wheel, some reader glasses, and uh, just various cutting tools and marking tools as well. I do have some pens and... Um, pencil markers there for when I'm doing my tracing of patterns and have some next projects. This one, I think I had mentioned to you all I was going to make it up next and I don't think I'm going to because summer is really on its way out and I think I'm going to save that for next summer and I think what I'm going to do next is or one of the next projects is this one I had mentioned um, out of that red fabric. But I'm not here to show you all of that. That's just what's on my table right now. One of the things I want to get done is a little black dress. Because I don't really have a decent little black dress. And that's pitiful. I should have. <laughs> should have more than one. But going around my sewing room. So on the far wall there you'll see I have some storage units there. The three drawers and then the little cabinet on the bottom. I just have a lot of stuff like zippers, I have seam binding and hem tape, and um, I have attachments for my um, embroidery machine. On top I have some some books and whatnot, uh, marking uh, tracing paper and stuff in the little basket up there, some instructional books for my machines, and I do on top have some patterns there but going around the room this is my pull out sofa that's in this room and then on this corner I have another little cabinet that has like elastic and um, uh, waistband stiffener and um, some trims and just various little things in there and I have some DVDs which are sewing DVDs let's see if I can get a little closer in so there are various different sewing uh, DVDs that um, I really like having, especially those that are focused on fit and how to um, size up or size down patterns. Those come in really handy. And then coming across here is my sewing um, cabinet. And what I have there is, well, my laptop is right here. And it's only positioned here because I'm not using the table right now. But so I have, as you can see, I have four machines set up. 
I'm going to pull this chair back. I think I'm going to sit as well so you can see this really good. The sewing table is it's very large. It's really long, as you can tell. But it has a lot of space on the bottom. I have some of my sewing machine manuals and just different manuals for things uh, for sewing. And then in the drawers, notions have bobbins for my bobbin, you know, machines that take the bobbins, have pins and some scissors and stuff like that, my little clips. Then here I do have a lot, as you can see, of needles for my machines. I uh, used to buy needles in bulk so that I would just simply have them. You do change often when you're sewing, on a regular anyway. That's my Kenmore machine. This is my Evolve Serger. Going a little closer there, my Evolve Serger. This one is my Viking, um, sorry, my Viking. That's the main one that I sew on. It also embroiders. And in the back here, back here, back in the little cubby, there I have the unit there that attaches to the machine when I want to do embroidery. I have a little bag of snacks here that I'm working on. <laughs> um, this one is my Elna Serger and some um, accessories with that. Then over here, I have accessories for my Evolve. Now, uh, I've had all of these machines for quite some time. And again, you know I'm getting back to my sewing. But you probably wonder why I have several set up at the same time. And the reason is, what I do when I'm sewing, is, and it depends on the project, I may be using two or even three of the machines at one time. Um, depending on what I'm sewing and whether or not I'm sewing like multiples of something, like when I'm doing gifts around Christmas time and whatnot, it just helps in production of that. But one of the things is for the serger, but I would set it up to do just regular serging to finish and cut the edges and um, I'll set that up like that. Then if I'm doing something that requires a cover stitch, I'll set this machine up for cover stitch sewing only. And that way I don't have to change my machine back and forth from serging mode to um, cover stitch mode. And it helps so much when you're sewing knit projects and stuff like that to just have it set up and ready. So this machine, my intention is to always have it set as an over, um, a cover stitch, sorry, as a cover stitch machine, then that one as a serger. And then if I want to change it out from three thread to four thread or whatever, it's easier to do that than to change it back and forth to a cover stitch. Any of you who know about how that happens with the serger, you know it's, it's just time consuming to switch it out and go back and forth. So that's the reason. Then as for the sewing machine, this one is the main one I sew on usually when I'm sewing something. And then I may have this one set up to do buttonholes or vice versa. Um, it just helps to, um, when you're sewing to be able to do that. And since I have the multiple machines, it's just easy to do that. Um, what else I have here in the sewing table is various different notions, my measuring tapes, my uh, more pins and, and snips and snaps and all kind of stuff in there. Then down here I have, um, this is my multiple feet that I got here not long ago actually um, I think I mentioned this on a video well I did a video about that um, I have a little bias tape um, pressing thing and I have some of my sing my singer serger I do have another serger but it's packed away still um, that's the manual down there for that and what I have over here in the corner. So in this corner, 
I have. This basket contains um, a lot of the um, backing and interfacing for um, when I'm doing embroidery. That's what that is. It's various different types. Then back in the corner there, you'll see I have serger thread, several plastic boxes with serger thread. This box contains thread and then some other notions in the upper two drawers. This box contains thread. Then this one also contains embroidery thread. And, um, and you see it has a beautiful sheen to it. I love this embroidery thread, but three drawers of embroidery thread um, my rulers that's used for changes on patterns you know when I'm it's not really designed because I don't design but I will alter patterns and maybe change the design somewhat up on the wall there is my um, that is my bobbin not bobbin thimble <laughs> My mind went blank. My thimble um, box that I made and hung that up. Let's go this way. Um, more serger thread. And then these are special kits. I don't know if you've all heard of the Sure Fit design kit. This is by... Um, her name is Spalding. Let's see what's her, her name is on here. Oh, I can't think of her full name. But Spalding is her last name, I know. Then I have another uh, kit there that's called So Easy, I believe. I have a lot of pattern kits. And the thing is, I, I got to get back to using this stuff. Um, but anyway, I'll show you all as I do pull that stuff out to use it. On the very bottom, I have some pattern, how I organize my patterns. I will have to show you that whole setup. But in those binders on the bottom, at least the first three there, I have my pattern envelopes in there that are empty, but they're in a sleeve, um, a page sleeve, so that I can kind of look through those like you're looking through a catalog and pick your patterns. Then I have my patterns stored by number. So if I wanted to pull a pattern, all I have to do is go to the box and pull it by number after choosing a pattern from out of there. So that is how I had my pattern set up to, you know, for organization. But I have acquired many more patterns since I've set that up. And uh, even since I've moved, I've bought some. So I've got to get it kind of reorganized but that won't happen until I move so anyway have my little cardboard uh, thing there I use that especially when I'm tracing patterns out because you put push pins in it and that comes in really handy then some quilt rulers and my regular yardstick then I have this little thing here that's a pull out has all kind of sewing notions needles all kind of stuff in there. I've had that for years and years and years. Then here I have my TV that I watch when I'm um, in my sewing room. Um, have my music if I want to listen to music. And then I used to have my dress form over here in this little cubby there. But I decided to put her over here since I put this there. So she's there. And then there's my... Um, that's a thread holder. I'm not going to use it right now because I want to mount it to the wall. So I'll do that when I am in a permanent sewing space. I do have some boxes there that are not um, totally unpacked. I've opened them, pulled out what I needed, and then just left them there. So they'll stay there until I move again. Now, back behind my sewing cabinet, you'll see here. I have some plastic. There's three, no, two large drawers and two small drawers in those uh, plastic containers. I have two of those back there, and they're holding embroidery thread as well, but it, it's in the cones. 
it's the larger embroidery thread that I use on this machine. Now coming around my table on this side, these are all the patterns that I've acquired um, over the past couple of years or so. So I'm not going to show you in detail, but there, this bin here is full. Then this is the overflow. There's some patterns in the bag there. <laughs> then this uh, table does have drawers with storage on this side as well as the other side. Have some things in there. And then I have a bin here with fabric. I had actually pulled out to possibly sew this summer. I'm not going to get to most of that, but I do plan to use some of that stuff coming for fall. There is my basket full of um, my sewing ham, my pressing ham, sleeve ham. This is a tailor sewing thing. Um, um, a clapper. And so just things you use when you're pressing. Then I have tracing paper there and some back there for tracing out my patterns. Then this is a little ironing board that comes in so handy. I can use that instead of um, setting up my big iron ironing board. And I'll show you in a minute the uh, big one. But I use that a lot when I'm just pressing seams or, you know, when I'm doing my process pressing, you know, during my sewing process. Now, I'm going to show you this closet. Don't hate me. <laughs> In this closet, I have my fabric. Now, you see those gray bins and on top there, as well as up top all the way down to the floor floor to ceiling this is my fabric collection and believe me I gave away a lot of fabric but I still have a lot I have some back here and each of these gray bins are full of fabric can't really show you it's black fabric in there but each of those bins have fabric in it have interfacing and I got some interfacing on sale today as a matter of fact because it was 50% off that little shelving unit back there goes down to the floor it has fabric I do have some yarn um, I used to crochet and knit a little bit, but uh, never got really far with that. This is my main ironing board because it has a boiler system to it, but it's very heavy, and right now it's just not easy to have it out. I do have another, two more machines, actually my Singer Serger, and I do have a really um, heavy, old, um, kind of vintage machine, but it's good for sewing heavy um, like leather and heavy stuff like that heavy canvas and that type of thing so I do have some other machines back there this is another just regular ironing board so I can pull this one down and put it away as needed but yeah that is my fabric collection and I can't wait to get this stuff where I can really um, get to it easily and play in my sewing room so that is that <laughs> and that's pretty much the tour of my sewing room back to my table the fabric that I've pulled out <laughs> and my patterns that are out here and that's about it guys and I do have a nice view when I'm sewing can sit here and look out on the little pond in my complex so it's just a nice space to um, sew in so that's it for my sewing room tour for now I'll be back to um, share more as I go and um, I just wanted to pop in and do a quick tour of my sewing room 
So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for my new subscribers. I will be back with more very soon. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.